What's up, everybody? Clinton Fauché here, and I'm Albert Chavez, and this is Front Porch Chronicles, and we have a very special up-and-comer on the scene today, Nicole Risholt. I know I chopped her name up. I don't have that Norwegian <laughs> accent, so I'm going to fake it till I make it and go with it. Yeah, thank you so much for stopping by uh, yeah. today. I know you have a busy schedule, and it's uh, it's late over there, too. <laughs> Yeah, well, thank you guys for having me. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. So, uh, you know, when did you start with martial arts? So I moved from Oslo, which is the capital of Norway, to uh, my hometown, Zagvik, uh, in 2019, 2018, 19. And, like, I was the first of my friends to move back, so I just really really just like wanted something to do and have some hobby, hobbies, I guess. So I started with kickboxing and then like I was, I got bitten. So, so a little <laughs> once more, a little once more. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so it sounds like you started really young. When did you make that transition to MMA actually? Like the year after. Or a week, a uh, month, some months, a few months after I got into kickboxing. <laughs> and then, so from some with the with the training side of it, when did you know, or when did you say, uh, this is something that I want career wise? I, I want to be an MMA fighter. Oh uh, well, I wanted to fight. I wanted to fight as soon as like I started. I was like, okay, so how long do I have to train before I can actually have a fight? And this is this is one of many reasons why we align and like, you know, from our first conversation, I was like, OK, well, I did the exact same thing. I started I was like, hey, I'm going to go try an MMA class. And then it was probably three to six months after that. And I was like, OK, I'm ready for a fight. And they're like, whoa, bro, pump the brakes. You need at least a year's worth of training. I'm like, no, 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 no. Put me in, coach. Put me in, coach. So I can, I, I feel that and and respect that because I, I, you know, I'm kind of uh, the same way with it. Yeah, it seems yeah, like yeah. it seems like too, like uh, growing up as a fighter too. There's we always ask this every time between our MMA guys is like the family dynamic is huge when you're coming up into the MMA world because obviously you know you're getting cut, you're getting bruised, and especially when you're young, it's kind of seen as a stigma, you know, because uh, fighting can sometimes be uh, seen as aggressive. So when you're growing up, what was your family's reaction when you just when you told them like, hey, this is something I want to do as a career and be an MMA fighter? Oh, my mom still wants to kill me. <laughs> she is not happy. She wants, yeah, she does not want me to keep doing it. But she actually did come and see my fight last year. Uh, she was like, okay, you're done. It was good, but you're done. She wanted, she wanted you to be one and done? Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> So I know I know we talked uh, before about uh, MMA in Norway being banned. I kind of want to dive into that a little bit more because I did kind of some research, but I kind of want to get it from a fighter standpoint of why do you think I know boxing previously was banned as well. Why do you think in Norway what? What what do you think is the reasoning behind the ban? Or have they said, like, why they feel like there should be a ban on having MMA events and, and having MMA as, as a whole? I feel like it's just, like, a lack of knowledge um, and not being open-minded enough to, like, see that this is, of uh, like with boxing or any type of martial arts, really. And then we have so many other sports in Norway, for example, alpine, handball, you have a lot more injuries. So if it's the knockout part that you're concerned about, you should ban a lot, hell of a lot other more sports than just every day. Yeah, I agree. So, so with that, where do you think, has there been uh, any talks behind the scenes or anything um, where long term wise, they're looking at trying to get this, uh, the ball rolling with making it legal, or are they just kind of like that stubbornness where, like, hey, we don't want to hear it, it's banned, whatever the case may be? 
Yeah, well, we're trying. We were, we're like submitting applications, especially for like, we're hoping for amateur MMA to be legalized here fairly soon. But like the dream for anyone uh, would be to have professional MMA legalized here as well. And we have fighters such as uh, Jakar Mamsom and uh, Ivana Petrovic, who are now in the UFC. And I know they've been talking about that um, also to legalize MMA in Norway. Yeah, it looks like... Uh... One of the guys from the USC, he goes to Sweden to train a lot of the times, and that's where he fights. Is that kind of like, do you have to find other outlets outside of your, your home country to find these opportunities? Because I'd imagine even finding like training partners has to be difficult too. If, if, uh, so what, what is the training schedule like then for you? If, are there actual MMA style gyms or do you kind of have to do everything private when you're working in, uh, no. in Norway? Yeah, we do have, uh, so I do go to my local gym, Ludwig Kompsport, to train MMA. So you're allowed to train and everything, but you can't compete. Okay. So so how do you think, has how has that kind of affected your career? Is it, is it I'm sure it's made it more difficult to kind of uh, find things and, 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 you know, do things outside of, is how difficult does it make it? It is fairly difficult. Um, there are not too many. It's hard to get a fight. Um, for example, I've only had one the last the, the last year. Um, also, I've been injured, but still, there are not many. You have to go out of the country, and it's you can go to any neighboring country because it's only in Norway, North Korea, and Iran where you can't fight. But like, you still have to. It still takes an effort, and like, it's hard to find opponents as well. Well, one of the things that that one fight that you did have, whoo, that was we watched it on TikTok. I was like, okay, I was trying to see. I was like, oh my god, you destroyed her! Oh my god, it was like super quick. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, I was like, it was a minute and a half in the first round. I've been training for so long. I was like, I want more. Put me in again. Can I go next one too? Yeah, let's do a round robin. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I watched your fight and it's funny because Albert, we were kind of going through and I was getting uh, David some info on you and stuff like that. And I watched the fight from the technical side of it. And he was like, bro, she destroyed this girl. And I was looking at things from uh, uh, the technical standpoint and for you, your first fight, and this isn't to gas you up because I'm brutally honest, but you're very long, lengthy, and rangy, yeah. but you used it like I don't know how long you trained up until this fight in the, you know, the fight game. And I know it's kind of been difficult, but man, you use your length. Like even when you throw your punches, they're so lengthy. But you're always balanced. So whoever coaching wise coached you or if that was just something that you naturally had for me, the first thing I was messaging was like, holy cow, she's long and lengthy. But bigger than that, she knows how to create the range and all of that stuff. That's something. I do, you, do you practice that? So I'm curious. You have your significant other and he trains in MMA, right? Is it your fiance, your boyfriend? husband yeah uh yeah my fiance and i were like we have kind of the same body type so a lot of the stuff that works for him um works for me as well but we also do have a really great boxing coach at our gym as well so you, you're telling so, me you, you, you kick yeah. his butt right every time definitely not <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so I'm curious too. So like, obviously you have everything going on inside the octagon. You have your personal life too. It looks like you ski a lot. How do you just as a, as a layman like me, I, I don't do jujitsu or anything like that. I grew up playing basketball. So I am diving into this world now head first with me and Clinton have learned. He's taught me a lot because he used to fight professionally or excuse me, amateurly and, uh, did jujitsu, uh, competitively. For someone that is outside of the arena, how do you balance the lifestyle of a fighter with your personal life and, and all your personal and, relationships? And, well, and, and work, work because right. it's like one of those things, again, going back to the difficulties, 
I'm sure you know, she, you've got to work a full-time job because you can't really do this professionally. So it's, you know, how do, how do you balance that? Well, a lot of my like social circle is at the gym as well. Um, but it's work and gym. That's <laughs> pretty much it. That's, uh, uh, what I do like more importantly for me is family to like spend time with my family. That's, um, I'm really tight with my family as well. So it's, it works out oddly enough. <laughs> Good. Uh, and, uh, so let me ask you this. What is the biggest lesson so far that you've learned, uh, with being a fighter? Um, to be patient and, uh, to just like being a, just stepping outside of my comfort zone and knowing that as every time I do that, my comfort zone will expand. There's something about like, um, cause I, I do a lot of marathons and stuff like that. This last week was actually the OC one and I trained for that. There's something about putting your body through physical stuff. That's just completely different that people don't understand. And it's, it's a testament that, you know, sometimes you don't want to, even if you love it, right. There's days that you're not going to enjoy it. There's something that, that, that really changes your mindset when you wake up every day and still end up pushing that body. Like you said, that patience that you have to deal with, like dealing with injuries is something that's a part of it too. And just no knowing that, Hey, like, I know this is not where I want to be right now, but I'm going for something. There's something that's really special with an athlete's mind. That's I think people like people that don't do something like that, they, they can't really understand. And it's really a testament to show like, Hey, to you, like, yeah, you're going through like this tough time where you can't fight professionally, but you know, in the long term, it's going to work out for you in the long run. Well, and it's it's also empowering. I don't know if for you, but for me, um, it was empowering to get in there because people don't understand. Like I try to relate or try to explain to people. And although I only, you know, I fall amateurly um, when that cage closes and I don't know about you but like my mind was running a million miles an hour like when the cage closed for my first fight and I'm like okay wait a minute what was the game plan holy cow I can hear I can hear my friends and family yelling and I'm like bro I'm really not trying to get knocked out in front of my friends and family so I need to get this going it, but after the fight, it's so empowering to know that you can push yourself outside of your comfort zone um, and per persevere through that, whether you win or lose, to actually go through that. And that's one of the things I don't think people, uh, you know, Twitter MMA specifically is brutal. Um, and, and MMA fans, I don't think they give people enough credit for stepping into that octagon because it's not just about the fight physically, it's the emotional, it's the mental and being able to stay strong to that. So any fighter, you get respect for me and any fighter that actually gets in there, win, loss, or, win lose or draw, um, get mad respect for me because it's a it's a difficult difficult thing to do. Uh, so I commend you. So I'm curious. The first so how many amateur fights did you have before this professional fight that you had last time? Did you have a lot of experience going into that? No, that was my uh, that was uh, my first amateur fight. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So like when you were going in and that cage closed, like what what do you do? <laughs> like, is there a ritual that you did to like make sure you got mentally prepared for something uh, as serious as as that first fight? Um. Well, I listened to uh, David Goggins. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stay hard. I keep him on repeat. On repeat. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's always funny listening to fighters because some people like listen to like headbanger music. Some people listen to the motivational stuff. Some people listen to rap. Some people country. For me. I like to just be left alone and sit over kind of in the corner and everybody has their own kind of thing. So, um, 
Yeah, you know, I, I love Goggins. I've read both his books, and every time I read it, he makes you want to jump through a wall. Like it doesn't matter what's <laughs> going on, you're gonna make yeah, sure you get through whatever you need to go through. So that's really cool. Um, go ahead. What yeah. What motivates you um, to keep going forward? Because I'll be honest with you, uh, it's difficult knowing that you want something so bad, but for Norway to be uh, it to be banned in Norway. It's, it's, you kind of have to go through some extra hoops and extra things. So what keeps you pushing forward? I'm competitive. Like if they say they're, they're not going to allow it, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to keep pushing until you allow it. So <laughs> that's, uh, my competitive side, I guess. Yeah. And, and I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, kind of we talked about some stuff, uh, some projects that we're doing. Um, I'm looking forward to and I'm I'll be honest with you. I'm super stoked about some of the things that we're going to be doing and projects that we're working on and getting you some fights, um, especially after I watched your fight and actually getting to know the person that you are, like I said, I can always read a person really quick. Uh, and you have a very pure uh, soul about you. And I feel like that you are a person that that women's MMA and MMA in general need good people bigger than just good fighters. And I think you're the combination of both of those things. And so for me, I'm super stoked and and really looking forward to some of the things that we're going to be doing. Is there a specific goal that you're looking for? Be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, 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 I know. I'm so hyped to see you get back in the octagon. Is there a specific goal that you're looking for in your career? Is there something that you're, you're, you would love to do that you've always been dreaming about since you started uh, pursuing the stream? I just want to see how far I can get. So we were curious too, um, just, you know, in the world of MMA, it's a different, it's a completely different world. And traditionally, um, it's been seen as like a male dominated sport. So I was curious, um, like what specific, specific challenges have you encountered as a female MMA fighter in, um, in the world of MMA? Um, well, I only train with men, so, um, but I feel like that also gives me an advantage, like when I do fight women, because I'm used to like the hard pushback from the guys. And like, I always have something to, <laughs> to like, I always have to be in the fight, like both mentally and physically. So like, yeah, but I feel like we need more women in the sport. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I know. It feels like the. But it, it is starting to get more popular. I mean, like, it seems like like Wei Li just had a really good fight in UFC 300. You know, it feels like there's a lot of traction that will be happening down the line. We were just more curious because, again, like, you know, being in Norway, it's it's just a different culture, you know, compared to the United States where it's we've really seen a rise in UFC, at least here. I'm not sure if it's been uh, taken in Europe as well. Um, but it seems like everyone either wants to get into jujitsu, everyone wants to learn more Thai and boxing either just as a way for um, just as a protective mechanism for self-defense or just because it just seems like the next cool thing. So I just was curious um, because you are training with a lot of men, like how, how do they, do you ask them a lot of questions about like how to mentally get prepared and do they, do you, are they pretty supportive in your desire to become uh, successful in your career? Yeah, definitely. Like uh, the guys I train with are, they're like family, so we're like always uh, rooting for each other and like building each other up. So it's, uh, I feel like it, it's that like at any good gym, they have that uh, family oriented, like we take care of our own and each other type of mentality. Okay, so how do you, uh, how do you see women's MMA evolving? And bigger than that, what, what things would you like to see change kind of with the sport of women's MMA specifically? Um, I feel like it needs, uh, well, here in Norway or in Europe in general, we just need like to get, get it more out there and like show them that women are actually a part of this sport as well. And if that comes from 
uh, the American side of it or the European part, I don't know, but like just to show that this is uh something for women as well it's not just a uh, just for men or anything like that it's if you want to do it as an exercise just to like like you said for self defense purposes or anything like that just like get it more out there i guess so one of the biggest things with uh, women's mma kind of for me and this is something we talked about uh is the pay like i know for me i feel like uh yeah, I feel like the pay needs to be structured to where women are getting paid more. Um, and this is a judge, not unless you be judged. But I think, you know, that definitely needs to be something that needs to be addressed. Like I see a lot of uh, female fighters um, feel like they have to over sexualize their self or you know, creating OnlyFans and no judgment on OnlyFans. Um, you know, some of them don't use it to over-sexualize. Some of them just use OnlyFans to walk through a day in the life of or whatever. But I definitely think uh, the pay needs to be structured better for women. Um, definitely. Right. And bigger than that, I don't know what we caught beforehand is like, you guys put so much time and energy into your craft too as well. There's something that needs to be said too. Like you're training with men daily and that's the only partners you get. And so you you not only have to like build that innate respect with them at first, which is very, it shouldn't be that way, but that's just what happens, right? When someone comes into the gym is like, oh, can she compete? That's something that should not happen. But sadly, that's the reality of it, you know? And so you're already having to deal with that along with having to beat your competition as well. There's something that needs to be said and become more aware and it, there's being more traction with that to just showcase like, hey, like these women are great at their jobs. They're great in like as people, they're great in their craft and they can actually perform. And so I think we'll see a, a tide coming, a new good tide coming up in the next couple of years in the sport of MMA for you guys. And I'm looking forward to it too. And especially because you're going to be a part of it. We're excited to see where that goes. Yeah. And I... I yeah, I definitely feel like uh, this is going back to kind of like what we talked about. I feel like uh, that comes from change with uh, people. Not that anything is wrong with the people that are there now, but I think it a new group needs to come through to change that mindset and speak up and be the change uh, for women's MMA. And I feel like uh, you're the perfect example of what needs to be uh to make that no pressure no pressure but you know <laughs> I, I feel like you're you're the perfect example of what that shift is gonna look like what's your puppy's name nacho nacho <laughs> <laughs> i love nacho i love nachos the food and and yeah, probably yeah. the dog too so so finally um what message would you like to share with young girls and women who are considering pursuing a career MMA, uh, despite all the challenges that they may encounter throughout the way? Just go for it. Be don't be relentless. Be fearless. Just like go out there, get it. No one else is going to do it for you. So just just do it for you. That I, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you a question. Going back to your childhood, growing up. Were you always um, in that mindset? Like, how were you as a kid? Were you uh, physical in that sense as uh, a younger, like as a kid? Like, how were you kind of growing up? Uh, yeah, I was a tomboy. I would like lay on my stomach on a skateboard downhill. I would always mess up my I would get injured on the soccer field <laughs> on snowboard and this and that so yeah it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's been a roller coaster for my mom <laughs> <laughs> so did you play did you play soccer younger I played soccer for about 13 years oh, oh wow. wow 
Wow. It's yeah. it's crazy. We had uh, Matthias on here. Matthias was a former soccer player as well. So it's it's cool. To I wonder see. if it helps with the footwork, too. And it definitely helps with the cardio. Yeah, the cardio for sure. Yeah. I, how come you didn't want to pursue football we, or like soccer? You guys, Do you guys call it soccer or football? We call it football in Norway, gotcha. but I grew up with that being soccer and yeah. football is American football. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so do you do you watch but, yeah. do you watch American football? I do. Who's yeah. your team? Steelers. You're a Steelers fan? <laughs> My, you, look, you... I'm a Steelers fan. <laughs> so, look, you already had a fan in me. Now, my my little brother who lives... Ooh, I say little. He's like six... <laughs> he's like six three, six four, like 190, 200 of just like sheer hugeness. He is a diehard, diehard Steeler fan from back in the day. Oh, as, cool. Yeah, from back in the day of Troy Palomalo. He still talks about Troy Palomalo right on. To, yeah. the, to this day. So you 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 definitely probably already want a fan in my brother as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm a I'm a Philly fan. So uh, I know we have we've had some good battles in the past too. Just like obviously we're in different conferences, yeah, yeah. but yeah, you guys had a good draft this year, so I'm excited to see where it goes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm excited. So we've been doing this new thing. Uh, it's it's a little quirky, but it's really fun. We're going to ask you some rapid-fire questions uh, revolving around uh, okay. MMA. Uh, so we're just curious. The first thing that pops up in your head, you can go with a little story behind it, too, of why. Um, so we'll start off with the first one. Growing up, who was your favorite fighter? Uh, uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Damn, I love it. <laughs> okay, okay. Who, uh, what fighter that you've trained with or fought has hit the hardest? You only got one fight. Who who did you train with ha hits the hardest? Christian Huber, the <laughs> guy at my gym. <laughs> you didn't say your, your fiance. Is Are you calling him soft? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just messing. He knows there won't be no dinner. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, love I love it. I love. I love that analogy. Remember, look. Why is the food burnt tonight? Remember that low kick yeah. you gave me. Mm, sorry, accidentally overcharged your burger tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what fighter in the UFC MMA would you like to be friends with outside of the octagon? Um, Rose Namajumas. Oh, shoot, she's so cool. I feel like she'd be real, so much fun yeah, to train with yeah. and just be. She's with got that. amazing. Yeah. She's got an amazing, amazing story and background to her, and her perseverance through all that she's been through. Yeah, how can you not be a Thug Rose fan? She's big time uh, for me as well. Who would you watch in the UFC? Who would you most want to fight? Um, shit, I can't think of her name. The one that just fought Amanda Nunes. Andrade? Uh, Vixen, Venezuelan Vixen. Oh, oh. yeah, she's a beast. No, oh my God, I would not Vixen. want to fight her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Juliana Pena. Yeah. Who are your top five USC fighters spanning all time? Ooh. Uh, well, I'm gonna have to go with uh, Norwegians first. Um, Emil Mek, uh, Jakob Hermansson, Ivana Petrovic, um, and then, uh, let's see, uh, Rose Namajumas and Amanda Nunes. Last one, this one. If there was a zombie apocalypse, <laughs> what one fighter would you want on your team? Uh, I'm in mean, because he's batshit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> could probably scare him off. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, you've got an you've got an elite list of people. Those top five fighters, I think, uh, the Norwegian ones. Obviously, you have to stick with your nationality. And then 
Rose, man, Thug Rose, she's a beast. She's a legend. She'll be a Hall of Famer too. Yeah. That's a that's an elite top five UFC of all time. I, I appreciate that one for sure. Yeah. Well, and I think bigger than that, the the great fighter she is is the great person and soul that mm -hmm. she is. Yeah. And you put off those type of vibes. So I could see where you would would align with her. Um, and finally, I know it's late there, so we'll kind of kick it down. The last question, and this one's kind of deep, so if you need to think about it a second, it is okay. If today was your last day, what would you want Nicole to be remembered for? Um, being someone who sees others, um, puts others before myself, and just staying true to my core values and who I am as a person. I love it. We, again, just even the small interaction we've had today, I can see like just the light that you bring to all your friends and family. Um, your fiance is a lucky, lucky man for sure. Just the way you carry yourself. It's not, it's built on humbleness and the fact that you, you understand where you need to go and how you still stick with your stuff consistently. I can't even imagine what you're going through. Like the fact that you can't, necessarily not, not that you can't do what you love but you would obviously like to train and go out and perform on the the highest level for your country and for yeah. yourself personally i'm sure just the mental toll of that and then still waking up and doing what you need to do to show up for your friends your family your loved ones and yourself um it's really honorable to me i'm 25 so I, it's it's good hearing these stories um i have clinton here and hearing all these stories from other fighters as well that have been on our podcast it's really really powerful and really needed um, just to show like, doesn't matter necessarily only how you feel, but understanding the long-term trajectory is really important to combat that with the being present in, in who you are now. Yeah, and I think for me, uh, taken from this, it's kind of like, like I said, from the first interaction I had with you and even now kind of diving deeper into, uh, I'm super excited because I think uh, bigger than just great fighters, I want to work with and be associated with great people. Uh, and I think I hit a home run with you in that that state because I feel like you're going to be an amazing fighter. You already are. And I, I think the trajectory is only going to continue to uh, go up. But bigger than that, you exude this positive energy and vibe about yourself uh, that makes me willing to swim across uh, rivers or whatever I need to do to make sure that you're successful. So I'm really looking forward to being a part of your growth and your process of becoming one day a future UFC champion. Like I said, I've already been going through and picking out top 15 fighters that we're going to pick off along the way, even though we're just getting started. But that's how much faith and belief I have in you. Uh, again, no pressure, but uh, I know the sky's the limit for you, and I'm, you know, I'm honored and grateful to be a part of the process with you. So, thank you, thank you. Yeah, no problem. I know it is late there. You go get some rest. I know you got a, probably a busy training <laughs> session day tomorrow. Uh, get you some food. Get Nacho taken care of. Thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate you, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys so much. Have a good one.